This is the Legion Go S, and I had a chance to get hands-on experience with it. So we're gonna get some first impressions, but also there's been some confusion with the three different models that Lenovo dropped. And so I'm gonna make sure that the information here is correct. So let's get into it. First thing first, I wanna just make sure to go through all the specs that this device is gonna have in it. And I'm gonna pull that right off of Lenovo's website. There are two versions of the Legion Go S. One has Windows and one has SteamOS, but that's not the only difference. The Windows version has the brand new AMD Ryzen Z2 Go chip. Nothing else has this chip yet. And we don't exactly know how it's gonna perform but some people are speculating that the Z1 Extreme might actually outperform this, but that's just speculation and we don't actually know that and we probably won't until people start getting them and doing some benchmarking. It comes with 32 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte SSD, and a 55.5 watt hour battery. Here are the rest of the specs that are just written. This is right off of Lenovo's website. So this is what they're telling us. All right, enough with the specs. Now let's talk about the actual device. The software is surprisingly intuitive and actually really nice. They've done some work in updating and making their own custom UI and software that's integrated on Windows pretty good. Some of the other options out there and even some of the old Lenovo options just were not refined. They were not very intuitive. Now, it actually, like, when you hit the button and that side console pulls out and you've got all those options, it feels a lot more like a console and a lot more like the Steam Deck. So that's really great to see, but hopefully we can start seeing some of that work coming from the operating system, also known as the Windows team. And there was some talks about this and some speculation that there's going to be some sort of Xbox Windows integration coming along which is actually really good news because right now all these third-party companies like Lenovo is creating software that's going on top of the operating system. That's what's causing so much of the hiccups. If it could just come right from the source and we could start seeing this kind of stuff built into the operating system, like what Valve is doing with SteamOS, I think we could start seeing some much better experiences in these Windows handheld devices and competition is great. We want to see Windows pushing and making things better. We have a big announcement, everybody. We are doing an even bigger and more epic giveaway. Thanks to the incredible people over at Vitcher, we will be giving away the Vitcher Pro Cloud Pack. This features the brand new Pro neckband, the Vitcher Pro XR glasses, and an 8-bit Zoo controller everything you need for epic cloud gaming and even more. This ultimate bundle is valued at over $700. So again, thank you so much Vitcher for this. This is just so awesome and it's been so much fun to be able to give away these amazing products to you guys. The Vitcher Pro XR glasses deliver a fully private 135 inch, 120 hertz, full HD display with ultra clarity and a thousand nits perceived brightness for an immersive experience. And now with the Pro Neck Band, you can stream from your PC or game in the cloud like never before. Don't miss your chance to win. Click the link in the description and enter and rack up as many entries as possible. Good luck, everybody. If Windows actually commits to this and starts making some big moves, that's just good for the consumers. We're going to start getting some really interesting and fun experiences. Okay, enough of all of that. Now, my first impressions holding this device and getting to play around with it was that it's kind of great. I love the feel of this device. It feels almost like exactly what I wished the ROG Ally X was in terms of ergonomics and having that 16 by 10 screen as opposed to the 16 by 9 it's just that little bit of extra real estate on the top and bottom does make a difference and I think the Steam Deck is just still on the right path of having that aspect ratio and I'm really happy to see that Lenovo is going in that direction as well with this device however it's also not an OLED display and it is getting to the point where some of these nice OLED displays, 
even not side by side comparison once you've gone oled like you can tell when you're looking at these lcd screens however that doesn't mean this is a bad screen it is supporting vrr it's 120 hertz and it's a big gorgeous eight inch screen I also don't blame them. They don't want to make another $900 device, so they couldn't put an OLED display in it. And that's okay, because this is a very solid LCD screen. This handheld is heavier than the Steam Deck, and actually, I believe it's heavier than the ROG Ally X, but it doesn't feel like it when you're holding it. The ergonomics are so comfortable that I'm not really thinking about like, wow, this feels heavier than the Steam Deck. That never crossed my mind. I didn't even know that until I actually went and compared the specs later because the entire time I was using it, which was like, I sat here for an hour playing with these, it never crossed my mind. It just felt really nice in the hands. I think they did an excellent job on the actual design of the shell. And then all the buttons and everything else on the device feels super quality. I have no issues at all with the design of this device. Now, one of my gripes is the battery size. I was really hoping that 2025 was gonna be the year of bigger batteries. These 50-ish watt hour batteries in these super powerful handhelds just seemed like something that was happening in 2021, 2022, but 2025, guys, the ROG Ally X created a new standard in handheld gaming with a massive 80 watt hour battery. I'm not saying that these cheaper devices need that big of a battery, but I also, I just don't think we should keep slapping a 50-ish watt hour battery in these devices. Could it get to 65 at minimum? That would be good to see. I'm very curious to see what the battery difference is gonna be on the Steam OS version compared to the Windows version that has that brand new Z2 Go chip compared to last year's Z1 and Z1 Extreme. Maybe I'll be wrong, but I think it's possible that the Z2 Go chip is going to be very close in performance to the Z1 Extreme, but actually more battery efficient. So this device might actually be a really good option because they're also kind of tricking people by saying the Steam OS version is only going to be $499. But if you look at the fine print, it says up to a Z1 Extreme and up to 32 gigs of RAM. So what I'm assuming is the baseline will come with the Z1 chip and 16 gigs of RAM. But really, if you want the most powerful Steam Deck, you're going to want to upgrade to the Z1 and you're going to want 32 gigs of RAM. At that point, it might be as expensive or more expensive than the Windows version. And then the Windows version might actually outpace you in battery life and still have the same performance. I don't know. That's all speculation, but I'd love to know what you guys think. Are you going to pick up the Steam OS version? Are you going to pick up the Windows version? Are you just going to put Bazite on the Windows one? Because it's coming out soon. Or are you looking at a different handheld? Leave me a comment and I will see you in the next one.